What's it they say? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Maybe because the holidays are right around the corner, but maybe it's because it's time for another episode of That Cost How Much! <laughs> Thank you, Becky. If you're not familiar, this is a series we do here from time to time where we dupe expensive home decor at a fraction of what it retails for. The first item we're gonna be DIYing today is this tree collar from Crate & Barrel. It retails for 129 US dollars and we're gonna be making it for a lot less. I've never actually seen a tree collar that looks like this, but I really love the wood look, so let's begin. That cost how much? So when I look at this tree collar, all I see is timbre, timbre, timbre. And it's been a minute since we used timbre around the office. But to create that timbre look, I'm gonna be going in with a pine trim. This pine trim is 5 16 by 11 16 and each piece is eight feet long. The other material we're using today is a half inch piece of MDF board and the piece I'm using is two feet by four feet long. I wanna make two rings to kind of act as the structure and the base for all of our timbre pieces to lay upon. To make the rings, I'm gonna be going in with a router tool. It looks like this. If you aren't comfortable with a router tool or you don't have one, another option for the step would just be using a jigsaw and tracing out a circle and carefully cutting it out that way. But let me familiarize. Famil familiarize? Is that it? <laughs> let me familiarize you with the router. Or the trim router, this is a trim router. I love her. So this trim router tool is a very versatile tool. It has many different functions. It's typically used for cutting, trimming, shaping wood. It has a variety of different attachment bits so you can create cool grooves and edges. It's just, I love this thing. And today I'm gonna to be using this trim router on a jig so that we can create a perfect circle. Making these two rings is going to be very dusty, so I'm gonna change out of this and into my work suit for the next little while. Okay, I've got a scrap piece of wood, some clamps, a drill, and my jumpsuit. Much better. Let's begin. This is the homemade jig that has a foot plate already attached to it. The jig is just a piece of wood with a large hole cut into it so our quarter inch straight bit can drop down and make the cuts, as well as smaller marked holes so we can adjust the desired radius of any circle we want to make. By replacing the foot plate of the router with this homemade jig, we can now use the board as a pivot point. The website says the tree collar is 24 inches wide and since my board is also 24 inches wide, I'm going to mark our radius at 11.5 inches just to be safe. Once we put the trim on, that will bring us to 24 inches. Now that our trim router is on the jig, the first thing I want to do is take a screw and drill that into the radius marker into the MDF board underneath. You can use whatever you have. I'm just using a scrap piece of wood here to elevate the MDF so the router bit doesn't touch our work table. To make the cut, I hover the router tool over the wood. I first start the tool before I plunge it into our MDF and then pivoting the router around the circle one time. This creates a lot of dust, so shut off the router and vacuum the path clean. Then you just set the depth of the router bit down about an eighth of an inch and repeat the same process until you get through the full depth of the board. We're almost there. I think one more. So good, it's so nice and clean. If you were to use the jigsaw, I mean, maybe you're better at using the jigsaw than I am. I just don't think you get as clean as a result of a result. So this is why I really love using the router tool. I actually wanna hollow out this circle that we just made. So we're gonna repeat that same process. So I'm actually gonna bring in our nail, put it in the same spot in the center, but bring it in an inch and a half, and that way we're gonna get a ring. Using the same circle from before, I repeated the process for the upper supporting ring, bringing in the radius this time to nine inches. Mm -hmm. 
So out of that one half of MDF, we got two lovely rings. These look amazing. So the idea here is that this will be our bottom ring and this will be our upper ring. When I go to put the timbre on the sides, I'm having an issue with these being right angles. This is another reason why the router tool is going to come in handy because I'm going to switch out the bit for a 15 degree chamfer bit and it's going to create a 15 degree angle on the edge of our rings. Therefore, our timbre can sit on a slight angle as well. And we're gonna chamfer these edges. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So I have our top ring propped up here on some paint cans. The website said that this is 10 inches tall and this is roughly 10 inches tall. We have our lovely chamfered edges on the side here that's ready for some timbre to be leaned upon it. See this? This piece is a bit too long, but we're just gonna go. And with that being said, I think we're ready to trim some timbre. For larger quantities of wood, I would definitely recommend picking it up from your local lumber supplier. The trim I'm using, my supplier charges about 41 cents a foot and I needed roughly 82 feet of this trim, so I actually only spent $33.91 on the trim. I'm cutting each piece to 10 and 7 16 of an inch long and I just clamped a piece of wood to my miter saw at this length so I don't have to be measuring each individual piece, as well as grouping three pieces of trim together at a time to speed up this process. So I have a bunch of our lovely cut trim here and now we're ready to start creating the timbre effect all the way around this collar structure that we've made. And to do that, I'm gonna go in with the pin nailer and some wood glue. A Little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here. The pins I have in here are five eighths of an inch long. Now taking a popsicle stick or really whatever you wanna use, I'm gonna use this as a spacer between each piece on the bottom ring. And then we're gonna repeat this until we're all the way around. The last thing I'm gonna do is put a clear coat on this. I'm using this Verathane diamond wood finish. This is a water-based top coat. And I'm just gonna go in with a paintbrush to apply our top coat. I don't know if you can tell as much on camera, but this satin top coat really just gave the grain the chef's kiss that it needed. It looks so good. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. I'm really excited to get a Christmas tree in here once it's dried, and I think it's time to do a little price point comparison to the original. Shall we? So I paid $33.91 for the trim and I only used half the MDF board. I know I'll have a use for the other half, so I only spent about $7.20 on the MDF. The package of pin nails is $5.81. The satin top coat we already had and only used a very small amount of it, but I will add it to the cost. I found the same one for $14.68, totaling our DIY to $61.60 compared to the retail price of $129 US dollars. Pretty good. So the next DIY we're gonna work on is this felt mistletoe garland from West Elm. It is really cute and sort of whimsical looking and it retails for 69.50 US dollars. And I know that felt is pretty inexpensive, so we're gonna bring that cost down a lot. So the main two materials we'll be using for this DIY are pom-poms and some green felt. The felt I found is actually a little bit darker than the garland looks on the website, but I thought it was a really beautiful green. So this piece of felt here is 36 by 36 inches, and I do believe that we're gonna be able to make our whole entire garland out of this piece. I'm gonna cut this whole thing into quadrants just to make handling it a little bit easier. So the original garland is made from hand felted wool and you can kind of see how all the fibers are sort of meshed together. So I wanna give this kind of, kind of factory made wool that sort of look. So to create this effect, I'm going in with a <laughs> stiff bristled brush. This is literally my cat's hairbrush. I have had this 
since I have, can remember anything. <laughs> I've had this brush for so long. <laughs> if you don't have a cat hairbrush, you can use anything that is just stiff and wiry. I think like a round hairbrush would be good. Basically what I'm trying to do here is just rough up the surface on both sides and just create that hand felted feeling. So I'm just gonna literally just brush this up. There's no real rhyme or rhythm to this. Kind of just roughing it up. Oh. <laughs> just like my cat. Harry. Very nice. Flip it over and do the other side. Lots of green hair. I've put two pieces together and now you can really see a good side-by-side -side comparison of what the brushing is doing. We're creating this lovely texture. So now we're ready to start cutting our felt. I've made a guide to help us out here. Kind of looks like this. This cutout will be available on our blog at thestorygirls.com with step-by-step -step instructions along with all the other DIYs you are seeing in today's video. The website says that the garland is five inches wide, so I knew I could make my guide also five inches wide. And it's just kind of this five finger star shape. And you can see here, I kind of made these angled rounded corners. Now I'm just gonna fold this in half and trace on our star shape. When I go to trace this on our felt, I wanna sort of align it in a puzzle piece kind of way, because I wanna get as much out of this felt as possible. So now I have a bunch all traced out. I'm just gonna go in with some fabric scissors and cut them out. And just like that, we have two little cute felt stars. Okay, I have all my little felt mistletoe stars here. They're looking really good. I've actually cut out 54 of these in total. And the next thing I wanna do is put these into bunches of threes so we can create nice full pieces to make a string of garland. So something like this. Oh, there's some cat hair. <laughs> Not surprising. And I'm just gonna use a little bead of hot glue to hold this all together. And with 54 pieces, I'll be making 18 groups of three. Okay, and this is our last little bunch. All we need to do now is take some yarn. I would go in with a dark colored yarn, anything that has like less of a chance of being seen. Green obviously would be preferred, but we already had this one. And I'm just gonna thread it on a needle. And I'm not gonna tie this off, I'm just gonna leave it open as we string. And I think this looks pretty good. So the very last step is just using some more hot glue and gluing on little pom-poms. I have two different size pom-poms. One is one inch, these ones are 0.5 inches. It's optional to use two different sizes here. This is just how it looks on the website, but yeah, let's get these glued on. Oh, oh it looks so cute. Okay, let's do this one. They're <laughs> so cute. To finish off the garland, I just tied a loop on each end. Okay, we have all the pom-poms glued on here. It looks so cute. I'm so glad we went with the brushed felt. It really makes it look a lot more expensive than it is, and I'm so excited to style this thing, so let's do that. I only used one package of felt that retails for $5.24, but with my 40% off coupon, I only paid $3.14 for the felt, $3.99 on the one inch pom-poms, $2.49 on the half inch pom-poms, and the yarn we already had, but I will add the price for a small package of yarn, you can definitely find some for about a dollar, totaling our DIY to $10.62, 
compared to the original at $69.50. Okay, our last DIY in today's video is this marble and wood serving board. Now, important to mention that this is a serving board and not a cutting board. I definitely wouldn't be doing any serious chopping on this board, but for serving at a holiday gathering, I think it's really beautiful. And this retails for $49.95 US dollars. All the materials I'm gonna be using for today's project, I've sourced secondhand. I actually found this piece of marble on Facebook Marketplace. Someone was selling their leftover marble for $7 a square foot, and I really don't think you're gonna find price like that especially for marble anywhere but secondhand so definitely something to consider I actually got this whole piece for seven dollars even though this is more than a square foot and because I was able to talk her down because of this little divot that it has here actually let me convert that seven dollars to US because I want to try and keep it consistent um, so five dollars and 19 cents for this whole piece of marble, which I'm really happy about because I really only need a small bit of this. And then this cutting board I found at the thrift store. I got it for $4. That's actually $2.96 in the US. I already converted that. I did not just do that mental math now. And I actually picked this one because it's the exact same height as our marble. So the website says the serving board is 9.5 inches wide by 12.25 inches tall. So I went ahead and made a kind of template guide to help measure each tree section. It looks like this. Before I make any serious cuts, I definitely just wanted to check the ratio of each measurement to one another. First, I wanna cut our cutting board and we can use our template to get it measured up. I'm gonna be using the circular saw to cut the board. I'm pretty certain this cutting board is made of bamboo, which can be prone to splintering. So I've installed the crosscut blade into our power tool. This type of blade has many more teeth than a regular saw blade, which will in turn be less aggressive for our wood, as well as adding tape to the cut lines is gonna help as well. I'm just using a straight piece of scrap wood to help guide the circular saw and ensure I have really straight cuts. Once all my tree sections and angles have been cut, I just used some 125 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and went over all the surfaces. I also just rounded out the bottom corners, but leaving the top corners more blunt. Now we're ready to move on to the marble. To cut the marble, I'm going in with a wet saw tile cutter. And because marble is a really hard stone, I've actually put a diamond blade in our machine here, so it should cut like butter. The wet saw has a water reservoir that filters water around the blade. The water acts as both a lubricant and a coolant for the blade and the tile. So if you were to try to dry cut, the friction would actually cause the tile to heat up too quickly and which often causes cracking or chipping. It also helps contain the excess dust particles from floating up and getting everywhere. Please only use the wet tile cutter if you have really done your homework or are working with someone who is experienced with these machines. You know, just safety first. Okay, let's start. Okay, we have all of our pieces cut out and they are looking so nice. I just wanna give an option here. If the wet tile cutter seems a little bit too advanced for you, another option would be using a manual tile cutter. It kinda has a score and snap rig to it. The only thing about that though is that you won't be able to use a piece of marble on something like that. Unfortunately, marble is just too dense. But what you could do is use a piece of ceramic tile that looks like marble and that would definitely be a very inexpensive option as well. The next thing I want to do is put some construction adhesive between our pieces and clamp it all together. And I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours before I move on to the last step. I'm adding tape to the top in case of any squeeze out getting on the surface. And then here I am just scraping away the excess glue. Okay, it's the next morning. Let's get this thing unclamped and take the tape off. I'm gonna make sure to clean off the board and then using any old food safe mineral oil, I'm just rubbing this in with a clean cloth.
Now let's take a look at this serving board all finished and styled. Using only secondhand materials, I only paid $5.19 for the marble, $2.96 for the cutting board, and the food safe mineral oil was $7.43, totaling our DIY to $15.58 for the serving board compared to the retail price of $49.95 US dollars. Honestly guys, in Canada, this one costs way more for us. Like it's $80 for some reason, and that's even more than the exchange rate. So. Anyway, <laughs> I am so happy with how our three DIYs turned out today. Take all those savings and use it towards presents for your loved ones or yourself. You deserve it. And if you're looking for ideas, definitely check out a recent video where Becky shares her tips and DIYs for last minute gifts for the holidays. See you guys next time. This looks like a little wheel of brie cheese and now I'm hungry. I really feel like that girl right now walking around with a bouquet of flowers. It's a nice feeling. <laughs>